Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to How Train Your Gavin. Today I'm going to be talking about some movies and some middle grade books that I think would go very well with them. So if you enjoy this movie, you will like this middle grade book. I have done a video like this in the past. It's been nearly two years since that one actually, so it's probably best that I do a little bit of an update. But if you do want to check that one out, my recommendations still stand. I do give middle grade book recommendations that I think are pretty well suited to movies like Frozen, Jumanji, Lord of the Rings, and more. I'm struggling to remember what else I said in that one. But I will link that video down below if you want to check that out. But before I start, don't forget to like this video if you enjoy and subscribe if you haven't already. So I have 10 movies and books to talk about in this video, so let's get to it. So the first movie and book pairing that I want to do is The Addams Family, and I mean, you can count the newest animated movies as well, but I do have a soft spot for the 90s films, and The Monsters of Rookhaven by Padre Kenny. Now both these things revolve around a family, and they are a very different kind of family. So in The Addams Family, they are just, I mean, I think they're kind of human, but kind of not. I mean, it's a little bit confusing. I don't know what they are, but they are a really unique and dark family that love darkness and the grotesque. And I think the family in The Monsters of Rookhaven are very similar, but they are actually monsters in this. So we do follow Mirabelle who lives in this house that's protected from the outside world with her monster family. And they're essentially protecting themselves from humans, but there is a sort of rip in the protection around this house and two humans wander in. Now the illustrations in here by Edward Bettison are incredible as well and I think they really do fit the Adams Family vibe so well. So I will show you a couple of examples. We have pages like this and honestly this made me crap my knickers when I opened this spread because I wasn't expecting spiders to leap out the page. But there is an incredible variety of monsters and storylines in this and I really do think the vibe of the Adams Family really works well for the monsters of Rookhaven. And I do also want to say that these recommendations they're not going to be exactly like the movies I'm comparing them to or anything, but I do think either in vibe or character or if there's just a certain theme that I think really fits well with both entities, then I will say why. And I do think it's mainly the Adams Family vibe of this and the Monster Family that has a really good parallel to the Adams Family. So yeah, I would recommend this if you love the Adams Family. Because I feel badly about you feeling badly about me. So the next movie is Labyrinth and the book that I think you would enjoy if you enjoyed Labyrinth is The Chime Seekers by Ross Montgomery. Now this is definitely, I feel Labyrinth inspired, but this does use a lot of dark fae and changeling folk tales. So it really does do its own thing and it's incredible. I absolutely love this book. But with Labyrinth, we followed Sarah who ends up accidentally wishing away her half-brother to the Goblin King and she must save her half-brother before he becomes a goblin forever. It's been a while since I've seen it. It's something like that. But in this one, we follow Yanni and he has a new baby sister who he really doesn't like. And one night he is babysitting his baby sister along with his cousin Amy and he accidentally allows a evil fae to swap Yanni's baby sister for a changeling and Yanni has to try and save his younger sister. In a warped version of his village he has to try and collect three magical objects in order to win his little sister back. But fays are tricksters and we have a world where there are goblins in this too and it has this incredible adventure that I think really suits well with the Labyrinth movie too. So this one I feel like the plot, if you really enjoyed the plot of Labyrinth, I think this one will definitely speak to you if you like the visuals of like the goblins and and we have evil phase, changelings, all of that sort of stuff, then you will definitely enjoy the Chime Seekers. Now let's have a Kiki's delivery service. This is a comparison that I think everyone probably already knows, but I do want to put it out there as well. But I would compare Kiki's delivery service to Eva Evergreen, Semi-Magical Witch by Julie Abey. And I read this one not too long ago. I do have a reading blog for it. And I read this one and the sequel. And this one definitely feels more Kiki's delivery service than the sequel does. And that's not a bad thing, honestly. Like this story goes on its own path. So this one is another one where I think the plot is just very similar. So here we follow Eva who is desperate to become a novice witch before a certain birthday and if she doesn't she will lose her magic forever. However she doesn't really have the best of magic, she's only very again semi-magical and that kind of goes hand in hand with Kiki who really only just flies. I don't think Kiki's delivery service is overtly magical whereas I definitely think this is more fantastical than Kiki's delivery services. So Eva ends up going to this new town to prove herself and the townsfolk there don't think that she'll be able to do it. So she ends up setting up a magical repair shop in order to prove herself. And you know, Kiki has her delivery service in Kiki's delivery service. So again, we have very similar plot patterns. But yeah, I think this is just a bit more fantastical. It definitely leans more into the fantasy side of things. And it's just an all around fantastic book. And I really love this and the sequel. And yeah, if you love Kiki's delivery service, 
you will love Eva Evergreen. So next is a little bit of an underrated film, I think. I don't think a lot of people really talk about it, but that is The Page Master, you know, the one starring Kevin from Home Alone. I think his name is Macaulay Culkin. So I would pair that movie with Pages and Co, Tilly and the Book Wanderers by Anna James. The Page Master follows a boy who goes to a library and ends up getting trapped in there. And in order to escape this library, he has to battle his way through literary classics. So we have things like Treasure Island in there. And you know what? That really goes well with. <laughs> so in Pages and Co, Tilly is a book wanderer and book wanderers are people who can literally walk into books, walk out of books, have characters come out of books, traverse with the characters inside the books, outside the books. There's just so many things that you could do with the book magic in the Pages and Co series. And I think in nearly every single Pages and Co book so far, there has been some sort of classic in there. I mean, and so much more as well. There's not just like one story per book. In this one, we had like Alice in Wonderland, Anne of Green Gables, Treasure Island, which we also have in The Page Master. So you really do get that feeling of book magic and what reading can do and how powerful it can be in this series, as well as, I guess, in The Page Master. So yeah, even though The Page Master stars Macaulay Culkin, I don't think very many people have seen it. So yeah, <laughs> can't seem to go through a middle grade video without mentioning this book these days. But if you enjoyed Men in Black, then I think you would love Amari and the Night Brothers by Baby Alston. This one was constantly being compared to Men in Black anyway. So this is not something that I've just thought of on a whim. This is usually described as Men in Black meets Percy Jackson or Nevermore. So in Men in Black, we have a secret organization that essentially battles and deals with extraterrestrial life on Earth, all while trying to hide their existence from humans. Well, in Amari and the Night Brothers, we follow Amari and she is invited to be part of the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs. And the Bureau essentially deal with what Men in Black do as well. But not just extraterrestrial, there are a lot of fantastical creatures. It's definitely a lot more fantasy than it is sci-fi. But Amari is training to be a junior agent and she has a lot of things to face on her journey in getting there. And she's mainly essentially doing this so that she can find her missing brother who was an agent and has been missing for a little while now. I think it was six months. So there's a lot at stake for Amari and you will have heard about this book a hundred times on my channel and other channels as well because everyone loves this book. I couldn't do this video without this one. So yeah, I had to point this one out, okay? And if you enjoyed Encanto, which you must have done, come on. Even if you didn't love the film, you must have loved the songs, right? Then I think you would really love The Castle of Tangled Magic by Sophie Anderson. Now, the whole reason I did this video really was because of Encanto. A lot of people were asking me what I would recommend that would be like Encanto. And I feel like this would give you Encanto vibes. Now, this is Russian folktale, so it's not multi-generational Colombian family or anything, but it has the same kind of heart as Encanto. Now, in Encanto, we follow Mirabelle, who was trying to save her family and to save her home. And in this one, we have the same kind of deal. So we have Olya, who has to protect and save Castle Mila, which is her family home, from destruction. And it falls on her shoulders to do that. So yeah, the whole idea of saving the family home is something that I think is a good comparison with Encanto. This is definitely more fantasy heavy than Encanto is. I mean, Encanto does have all of those incredible magical things happen, of course. But this one, we have Olia go into the attic where she comes across a sort of portal where she will find the answer to save her home from a terrible storm that's on its way. And there are certain things about this book that does remind me of Encanto. You know, this is probably a bit of a stretch, but you know, the heart is there, the family, the home, all of that I think is present in here that you probably enjoyed from Encanto the most. So yes, I think this is the one that I would recommend if you love Encanto. Now what's actually kind of popular at the minute are some Agatha Christie movies. The Death on the Nile movie is coming pretty soon. And if you enjoyed, say, Murder on the Orient Express specifically, then you might enjoy the Adventures on Train series by M.G. Leonard and Sam Sedgman. So yeah, this is the entire Adventures on Train series. So far, there are more on the horizon, but essentially these are mysteries that happen on trains, or at least train rides, train adventures, are part of the mystery. Every single book has been so enjoyable so far. So if you love Murder on the Orient Express, or the kind of Agatha Christie vibes, but you want it in middle grade, like these are cozy. I would say these are quite cozy middle grade mysteries that each deal with something different. We have a thief in the first one, we have a kidnapping in the second one, a murder in the third one, and so on and so forth. There are different things that happen, but I think the series as a whole is just perfect for Agatha Christie fans. So yeah, those new Agatha Christie films with Kenneth Branagh are coming out, and yeah, I think these will be perfect if you want to have something that's kind of similar to that. Now, I've made this comparison a hundred times on my channel before as well, but I would say if you enjoyed Pirates of the Caribbean, then you will really enjoy the Ship of Shadow series by Maria Kushner. And I 
think these are perfect for Pirates of the Caribbean fans. Perfect. Everyone knows Pirates of the Caribbean, of course. We have Jack Sparrow. We have Adventures on the High Seas. We have so much at stake and pirates and all of that good stuff. Ship of Shadows is essentially Pirates of the Caribbean with an all-female crew. We follow Aaliyah and she is dreaming of big adventures. She's a little bit like Elizabeth, I guess. You know, she is in this town where there is this legend of the Ship of Shadows and it's led by a crew of ruthless women. And one day it docks in Aaliyah's town and they want her. And it leads to a fantastic adventure that has so far spanned two books. I really do hope that there's more because this is such an adventurous series and so much happens in it. It just goes places, it's so good. And yeah, I think Pirates of the Caribbean, Ship of Shadows. Great pairing. I would say if you loved House Moving Castle, then you may love The Hatmakers by Tamsin Merchant. Now, when I'm making this comparison, I'm essentially kind of using the idea that Sophie from House Moving Castle makes hats. And in this, we have hat makers. This is set in a sort of Georgian London. And we follow the hat makers and Cordelia is the main character. And what the hat makers do, they can weave enchantments into hats and it makes the wearer do different things. Essentially, we do have other maker families as well that make different kind of clothes that use enchantments. And these maker families have to make peace clothes for the princess who is almost gonna be in war with France. This is such a gorgeous, spellbinding tale and it's definitely not like House Moving Castle in terms of plot but if you love the idea of like the hat shop that Sophie works in that whole kind of cozy vibe as well then honestly hat makers is the one for you. Both Cordelia and Sophie are very alike they are both very headstrong and they get things done they make things happen and I love that for them I do. It is just a small sliver of House Moving Castle but I guess if you're a fan of Diana Wynne Jones in general then Tamsin Merchant and the hat makers might just be for you. Now the last one I want to do is one that I haven't yet read but it honestly makes me think of a certain film and that is Now You See Me. And the book that I'm really excited to read and reminds me of this film is The Great Fox Illusion by Justin Edwards. Now this one comes out April 2022 so if you are watching this video well after that then it's out now. So Now You See Me is about magicians or a group of illusionists that do magic shows and they are pretty corrupt and stuff. But that whole idea of the magic shows and illusions, magicians, does remind me of the summary of this. We actually have the Grey Fox who has recently died and they were one of the greatest magicians of all time. We follow Flick who is chosen to go on a television show to compete for Fox's legacy. Now Flick isn't interested in kind of getting his legacy. She just knows that the Grey Fox destroyed her family and so she wants her revenge. So we have a little bit of corruption there like we do in Now You See Me. But again, we have the magic shows, the magic tricks, and honestly, it just sounds so fantastic. Now, this might be a little bit of a cheat because I haven't actually read it yet, but again, Now You See Me, Grey Fox Illusion, spot the difference. <laughs> well, I mean, there's lots of differences, like all of the comparisons I've just made, but, but I think, I think it could be a very good comparison. So there we have it. That was 10 middle grade books that I have paired with 10 films that I think they would be like. And if you are a fan of the films, you may enjoy the middle grade books. I mean, at least I hope you do. I hope you do. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you have any good recommendations for a middle grade book that you would have paired with a movie. If you have read any of the books I've said and if you agree, maybe disagree with my comparisons, that's absolutely fine. Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoy it and subscribe if you haven't already. I want to give a huge, huge, huge thank you to my Patreon for being so incredible, patient, amazing. I love you guys so, so much. These videos would not be possible without your love and support. So thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And a huge thank you as well to you for watching the video. I really appreciate it. And I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.